five arrests after a car chase in Trumbull and much more. John Kovach in today for Frank Renito with a look at your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update. And Donald Ang is back with a look back on this day in history. But first, in Stratford, a woman is dead and a man is injured following a shooting Saturday morning. Stratford police said that shooting incident took place shortly after midnight at 1584 North Avenue near Broadbridge Avenue. Police said that shooting followed what appeared to be a verbal argument. A 27-year-old woman was pronounced dead at Bridgeport Hospital. A 24-year-old man who was shot is at Bridgeport Hospital and was listed on Sunday afternoon in critical condition. Police have not identified either of the victims. They said the shooting is an isolated incident and there was no further danger in that area. North Avenue was closed for several hours because of the shooting and subsequent investigation. Police are still investigating and trying to identify the shooter or shooters involved. They're asking anyone with information to contact their detective division at 203-385-4119. And Trumbull police arrested five people yesterday after an alleged car theft in New Canaan and robbery in Trumbull. Now four of those arrested are juveniles and the fifth was identified as 18-year-old Johnny Aspilar of Hartford. According to police, the whole incident began when one of the juveniles stole a bag from the Westfield Trumbull Mall employee as she sat in her car during her break. The suspect, a 16-year-old from Waterbury, reached in and took the bag and then ran to a waiting 2017 BMW SUV, which had been stolen overnight from a New Canaan home after being left unlocked with the keys inside. That BMW then fled, nearly colliding with the vehicle of an off-duty Trumbull police officer, James Leos, who called in that incident. Well, canine officer Gregory Lee and police dog Storm spotted the stolen SUV as it exited the mall and traveled south on Main Street into Bridgeport. That driver reportedly ignored the officer's signal and continued traveling to Summit Avenue and entered Route 25 southbound. Well, with the assistance of additional officers from Trumbull, Bridgeport, and the state police, that vehicle was stopped on the highway near the Daniels Farm Road exit. Police charge Aspilari with first-degree larceny, conspiracy to commit robbery, and interfering with an officer. The remaining juveniles, all from Waterbury, were charged with larceny and conspiracy to commit robbery, as well as interfering with an officer. A second juvenile, a 16-year-old, was found to have an active arrest warrant from Waterbury Police and was turned over to that agency. Other juveniles, including a 16-year-old male and a 15-year-old female, were both released to parents. All were scheduled to appear in court. August 21st, the vehicle and its occupants are suspected of being involved in similar crimes in the area. And a new Canaan mother was arrested for endangering the health of her child by leaving her baby in a closed automobile for three quarters of an hour on an 85 degree day. Now that child was transported to Norwalk Hospital and medically cleared that same evening. But Catherine Ferguson, 34 years old of Weed Street, surrendered herself on August 11th after a warrant for her arrest was issued on the charge of risk of injury to a child related to that incident that occurred back on July 18th on Elm Street in downtown New Canaan. Now, according to a Superior Court affidavit, New Canaan police initially responded to a 911 call from Ferguson at 4.03 in the afternoon on July 18th at 81 Elm Street, reporting that her then 11-week-old child was left inside a vehicle. When police arrived, she reportedly told them she had been away from the car for about 10 minutes. Police investigators report that Ferguson parked her car in that area and went to Shoes and More, where she purchased two pairs of shoes, and then went to an eatery and purchased an ice beverage. Using credit card receipts, video footage, security camera footage from Manfredi Jewels across the street, and conversations with workers, police determined that that infant was inside the vehicle, which was turned off with the windows closed for about 48 minutes. From speaking with a social worker at Norwalk Hospital, police learned also that Ferguson stated she had errands to run, decided to take the infant with her, and then forgot the child was in the car because the baby fell asleep. Well, police report further that when the mother returned to her car, she found her child screaming, crying, and decided to call 911. Police say when they arrived at the scene, they found the child to be red in the face and had hair that was matted down with what appeared to be sweat. But there's a lot more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And in other news, Fairfield firefighters, police officers, and AMR paramedics worked together Sunday to assist a cyclist who took a bad spill while trail riding in the Lake Mohegan open space area. Now, firefighters used Gator 1 to transport that injured person to safety, and it happened to be the second time in a few days that they were able to use that vehicle. On Friday, firefighters used the Gator to transport a hiker who had suffered a leg injury at Lake Mohegan. 
And a Connecticut state trooper is expected to survive after crashing his motorcycle while on duty. State police say that trooper collided with a car that pulled out of a driveway in front of him in New Britain on Sunday. The 33-year-old trooper was thrown from his motorcycle and suffered injuries considered not to be life-threatening. Now, the 88-year-old driver of the car suffered some minor injuries, and both men were taken to the hospital for treatment. Police have not released the name of either man involved in that crash. And a 25-year-old Norwalk man was arrested and held by police on August 11th after a New Canaan resident said that man sent text messages that threatened harm and death to that local resident and the resident's family. New Canaan police say they viewed the text messages sent by Kyle Chickowitz of Wolf Pit Avenue in Norwalk and had Norwalk police locate and detain him. New Canaan police then went to Norwalk and took him into custody, bringing him to New Canaan headquarters, and he was charged with threatening in the second degree, and he was also held on a $100,000 bond. Police said they called it a domestic matter and released no further information. And a 65-year-old Darien resident fell victim to a wire fraud scheme after being contacted regarding a timeshare property. Well, according to police, that victim was contacted in April by a man calling himself Andrew Castro, representing International Real Estate Sales, a Chicago-based company. Well, Castro allegedly offered to purchase the victim's timeshare property in Cancun, Mexico, at a higher price than the original purchase. That victim exchanged emails with Castro and was referred to another man, Brian Montez, with West United LLC. After corresponding with Montez, the victim agreed to have $4,244 as part of an escrow agreement. Well, it was later determined that the entire transaction was a scam, and the incident is now under investigation by the Darien Detective Division. Police advise residents to be careful when engaging in unsolicited business officers, offers rather, with unverified businesses or individuals. And the Milford Fire Department held a mass casualty response drill on Friday morning at Wasson Field. The city's lifeguards acted as casualties in that mock drill prior to hitting the city beaches for the start of their shifts at 11 a.m. Now, emergency personnel practice assessing and organizing victims of large-scale events. They triaged the lifeguards who, in the exercise, had been labeled with different levels of injuries, moving the less injured to a separate spot on the field and taking those portraying seriously injured casualties to awaiting ambulances. You can get more at MilfordMirror.com. But let's switch gears now, throw it over to John Kovach for a look at the forecast. John, happy to have you on Coffee Break Thanks, today. Kate. The depth chart's getting a little thin. <laughs> I know. Down a couple here. So we're looking at a nearly perfect day outside around Fairfield County. Expected high of 84, plenty of sunshine to go with it. Not too much humidity. Light breeze around 10 miles an hour, just keeping everything comfortable through the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies expected through this evening and into tonight before we see increasing cloud cover and a passing shower or two possible before Tuesday morning. Another beautiful day expected tomorrow. Temperatures back in the low to mid 80s. Intervals of sunshine and cloud cover throughout the day. But we will see humidity starting to increase a little as we head toward a warmer latter half of the week. We'll see clear skies overnight Tuesday heading into Wednesday with a low of 67 Tuesday night. Warmer out Wednesday as temperatures jump to the low 90s for the first time this week. Mostly sunny skies expected from sunrise through late afternoon. Cloud cover begins to increase Wednesday evening. An overcast night expected with lows around 64. Possible scattered showers in parts of the country. That's going to do it for this weather update. Back to you, Kate. All right. Thanks so much, John. Well, we're going to step out for a break. When we come back, Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. John has your Nutmeg Sports update, and there's more local news after this. Now teeing off, Paul Miller from Miller Nissan in Fairfield. Excuse me, Mr. Miller. What about my new Sentra? Right now, lease a 2017 Sentra S for only $97 a month. He is never going to retire. Things are heating up this summer. See some of the world's best tennis players at the Connecticut Open presented by United Technologies. Enjoy food trucks, entertainment, and special events throughout the week, August 18th through the 26th. Get tickets at ConnecticutOpen.org. School's out, the weather is hot, and the fish are biting. Whether you're heading to the beach or out on a boat, stop in at the dock shop before you go. 
to fill your beach bag or tackle box with everything you'll need for fun in the sun. A new beach cover up, some sunscreen, or just some bait, the dock shop has you covered from either location. 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport. And yes, you heard that right. Bait is now available in Darien and Westport. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com. Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. Scap Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two and four door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Located in Fairfield, Connecticut, we're easy to get to. Just two and a half miles off the Merritt Parkway, exit 44 via Route 58 South. Save thousands right now at the summer clearance event. Now through August 31st. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to this August 14th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. We're happy to have Donald Lang back from vacation to give us a look back on this date in history. Don. Happy to be back. And actually, uh, today, uh, it was a highlight for those uh, re retiring, you know, taking that permanent vacation from, uh, from working. First, there we go all the way back to 1880. Construction on the Cologne Cathedral in Germany is completed. Uh, well, it doesn't even look real there, does it? But it had been under construction off and on for 632 years, although workers did take a century or two off here and there. The cathedral has the largest facade of any church in the world, and when completed, it was the world's tallest building until it was seceded by the Washington Monument four years later. To 1893, France becomes the first country to introduce motor vehicle registrations with the passage of the Paris Policy Ordinance Act of 1893. Uh, this was actually closely followed by the development of the interminable line, so thank you, France. To 1901 we go, in Bridgeport, the first claimed powered flight by Gustav Whitehead in his number 21 flyer. Uh, although if you want to avoid a fight, I would recommend you not mention that fact to anyone from North Carolina. Now, if you're interested, the Fairfield Museum and History Center on Beach Road is hosting a day-long celebration of Whitehead's flight today, including lectures and a display of a full-size replica. Five bucks will get you in the door, and there is a lot more to see. It's well worth a visit. Finally, now we go to 1935, Washington, D.C., for this. Who will reap direct benefits through unemployment compensation, through old age pensions, and through increased services for the protection of children and the prevention of ill health. Yes, that was uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signing off on the Social Security Act, creating a government pension system for retirees and also some other benefits for the unemployed and veterans and people like that. But the Social Security Act today, 1935. That is your look back in history for today, August 14th, and I'm Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, in other local news, Bud Brown, the Ridgefield resident pushing to build a private winter sports club at the site of the Pinchbeck Nursery on Peaceable Street in Ridgefield, spoke to HAN's Ridgefield Press recently about that plan. Now, dubbed the Ridgefield Winter Club, the unofficial proposal has drawn both the support and ire from neighbors and the extended community. Now, while the Pinchbeck Nursery lies in a residential zone, the Ridgefield Winter Club would be allowed to operate there if it obtains a special permit from the town's planning and zoning department. Now, residents opposed to the club's location propose an amendment to the town's zoning regulations, which would eliminate private clubs from the list of permitted uses for special permits in that zone. Now, that matter will go before a public hearing on Tuesday, September 5th. While Brown did not say when he would submit a formal plan for the club to the town's zoning office, he stressed that he wants to make sure all of the community concerns about the project are addressed. On Monday, August 7th, he walked the site and shared his vision of preserving some of the property's history. You can get a lot more on that plan at theridgefieldpress.com. But let's throw it back over to John Kovach for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Thank John. you, Kate. Thanks again. Let's start with the Trumbull 14 and under Babe Ruth team. They are playing in Glen Allen, Virginia in the 2017 Babe Ruth World Series after dropping their first two games in pool play 
and facing elimination, Trumbull put its season on the line against Southeast Regional Champs Greenville, North Carolina. In the bottom of the seventh, with bases loaded, this happened. Grudadoria, who ripped a grounder to the right side of the infield. He scores Chase Drail, who comes home from third, sliding under the tag to give Trumbull a 5-4 walk-off win. Trumbull wraps up pool play this afternoon at 1 against the Pacific Northeast champion from West Lynn, Oregon. A win today puts Trumbull into the elimination bracket. A loss will send the New England regional champions home. Sticking with New England champions... The Fairfield American Little League booked its trip to Williamsport and this year's Little League World Series with a 10-0 shutout over South Portland, Maine on Saturday. Fairfield used 13 hits to win their 18th consecutive game this summer and become the third Fairfield team to advance to the Little League World Series since 2012. New England champion Fairfield will open up play in Williamsport Thursday at 3 in the afternoon, squaring off against the Mid-Atlantic champion Holbrook Little League from Jackson, New Jersey. Stick with us throughout the week. We will follow both Trumbull and Fairfield as they fight their way toward World Series titles. And if you need a sign of falls coming, Kate, conditioning started today for those football teams that did not take spring practice. So... Summer's getting late. Yeah. I usually look at the return of pumpkin spice as the beginning of fall. Yeah, I saw my first <laughs> promo for pumpkin spice, too. That's going to do it for this Nutmeg Sports Update. Let's go back to Kate and her pumpkin spice All fixation. All right. Thanks so much, John. Well, in Stratford, choosing a firm to tear down an old ranger station to clear the way for a long-awaited dog park will be among the items on the agenda at tonight's town council meeting. The town's top board is expected to consider a resolution to accept a bid to complete the demolition of the former Ranger Station building in Roosevelt Forest at Monday's regular meeting. That meeting starts at 8 p.m. in the council chambers in Town Hall. Now, the Building Needs Committee received five bids for the demolition of that vacant Ranger Station. The lowest came from Ludlow Associates at $21,840, and the highest bid was $65,000 from GPIC and Sons Construction. Now, clearing that station will allow for the installation of the dog park in Roosevelt Forest. Creating such a park has been a goal of many residents for about a decade. Decade. The town council voted in March to approve the park, and the park will be named for former Stratford EMT Jared Levine, who died last year. Levine was an animal lover and owned several dogs. You can get more on that story at StraffordStar.com. And U.S. Senator Chris Murphy has embarked on his second Walk Across Connecticut tour, taking to the streets and dirt roads to listen to and get feedback from Connecticut residents. Now, Senator Murphy began his walk in Killingly on Sunday morning, and he will walk 103 miles through 21 towns over the next five days. He will hold a series of pop-up town halls each day along his route, where he will hear firsthand from Connecticut residents about a variety of topics. Now, members of the public are invited to attend Murphy's town halls, on Wednesday, August 16th at 6.30, he'll be in Newtown at the Edmond Town Hall. And on Thursday, he'll have an end-of-walk picnic in Danbury's Rogers Park at 12 p.m. But you can see his full schedule at MilfordMirror.com. We're going to step out for a break, and when we come back, we're going to recap some of the top stories we're following today on your coffee break after this. Want a new experience in car buying? Skip Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Browse our website, scapchryslerjeep.com or scapdodge.net to find the new Jeep, Chrysler Dodge car, minivan, or Ram truck you've been looking for. Just two miles from both I-95 or the Merritt Parkway exit 44. Save thousands right now at the Summer Clearance Event. Now through August 31st. 
Celebrate summer with fresh made-to-order picnic boxes from Walter Stewart's Market. We have delicious summery selections from buttermilk fried chicken to grilled lemon chicken kebab, grilled shrimp Caesar salad wraps, or lobster salad rolls. Our easy-to-carry picnic boxes come with your choice of a meal, as well as a dessert, beverage, and utensils. Order online for simple pickup options. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, and online at stewartsmarket.com. If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Registration is now open for our fitness training programs for high school athletes. The InSports Performance Center is offering blast speed classes, athletic functional movement assessments, and both men's and women's elite speed and strength training. Our premier programs help bring athletes to the next level. Call 203-268-1214 for more information. Like and follow us on Facebook. At Pure Bar Ridgefield, our tried and true method can shape every body and fit any schedule. Pure Bar is a total body workout using the ballet bar to perform small isometric movements which burn fat, sculpt muscles, and create long lean physiques. Sweat away the day and get lost in the music. Pure Bar Ridgefield located at 86 Danbury Road. Like us on Facebook at Pure Bar Ridgefield. I'm Tracy Masella, a licensed clinical social worker at Silver Hill Hospital in New Canaan. Join me each month as we talk with experts on the front lines of the treatment of mental health and addiction. Straight Talk with Tracy, a Silver Hill Hospital production, airs at 12 p.m. on the second Thursday of each month here on the HAN Network. Welcome back to this Monday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski recapping some of the top stories we're following today. In Stratford, a woman is dead and a man is injured following a shooting over the weekend. Now, Stratford police said that shooting took place shortly after midnight Sunday at 1584 North Avenue near Broadbridge Avenue. Police said that shooting followed after what appeared to be a verbal argument. A 27-year-old woman was pronounced dead at Bridgeport Hospital. A 24-year-old man who was shot is at Bridgeport Hospital and was listed Sunday afternoon in critical condition. Police have not identified either of the victims. They did say the shooting was an isolated incident and there was no further danger in that area. North Avenue was closed for several hours because of the shooting and subsequent investigation. Police are still looking into and trying to identify the shooter or shooters involved. Anyone with information is asked to contact Stratford Police at 203-385-4119. And Trumbull police arrested five people yesterday after an alleged car theft in New Canaan and a robbery in Trumbull. Four of those arrested are juveniles, and the fifth was identified as 18-year-old Johnny Aspilar of Hartford. According to police, that incident began when one of the juveniles stole a bag from a Westfield Trumbull Mall employee as she sat in her car during her break. The suspect, a 16-year-old from Waterbury, reached in and took the bag and then ran waiting to, waiting to a waiting 2017 BMW SUV, which had been stolen overnight from a new Canaan home after being left unlocked with the keys inside. The BMW then fled, nearly colliding with the vehicle of an off-duty Trumbull officer, James Leos, who called in the incident. Canine officer Gregory Lee and police dog Storm then spotted that stolen SUV as it exited the mall and traveled south on Main Street into Bridgeport. That driver allegedly ignored the officer's signal and continued traveling, eventually entering Route 25 southbound. Well, with the assistance of additional officers from Trumbull, Bridgeport, and State Police, that vehicle was eventually stopped on the highway near the Daniels Farm Road exit. Police charge Aspelair with first-degree larceny and conspiracy to commit robbery, as well as interfering with an officer. All the juveniles from Waterbury were also charged with first-degree larceny, conspiracy to commit robbery, and interfering with an officer. Another juvenile, a 16-year-old, was found to have an active arrest warrant from Waterbury Police and was turned over to that agency. Two other juveniles, a 16-year-old male and 15-year-old female, were both released to their parents and all were scheduled to appear in court August 21st. The vehicle and its occupants are suspected of being involved in similar crimes in the area. 
And a new Canaan mother was arrested for endangering the health of her child by leaving her baby in a closed car for three quarters of an hour on an 85 degree day. That child was transported to Norwalk Hospital and medically cleared that same evening. But 34 year old Catherine Ferguson of Weed Street in New Canaan surrendered herself on August 11th after a warrant for her arrest was issued on the charge of risk of injury to a child related to that event which occurred back on July 18th on Elm Street in downtown New Canaan. Now, according to a Superior Court affidavit, New Canaan police responded to a 911 call from Ferguson at 4 in the afternoon on July 18th at 81 Elm Street, reporting that her then 11-week-old child was left inside the car. When police arrived, she reportedly told them she had been away from the car for about 10 minutes. Police investigators report that Ferguson parked her car at 81 Elm Street and went to Shoes and More, where she purchased two pairs of shoes. Then she went to an eatery and purchased an ice beverage. While using credit card receipts, video footage, security camera footage from Manfredi Jewels across the street, and conversations with workers, police determined that the infant was inside the vehicle, which, which was turned off with the windows closed for approximately 48 minutes. From speaking with a social worker at Norwalk Hospital, police learned that Ferguson stated she had errands to run. She decided to take the baby with her and then forgot the child was in the car because the baby fell asleep. Well, police report further that when the mother returned to her car, she found her child screaming and crying, and that's when she decided to call 911. Police say when they arrived at the scene, they found the child to be red in the face and had hair that was matted down with what appeared to be sweat. But there's even more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And in other news, Fairfield firefighters, police officers, and AMR paramedics worked together Sunday to assist a cyclist who took a bad spill while trail riding in the Lake Mohegan open space area. Firefighters used Gator 1 to transport the injured person to safety, and this was the second time in just a few days that that vehicle was used. On Friday, firefighters used that Gator to transport a hiker who suffered a leg injury in the same area. All right, well, let's throw it back to John Kovach for one final look at the forecast. John. Kate, almost a perfect day to be outside. Expected high in the mid 80s. Forecasters call for sun all day. A little bit of overcast right now, but supposed to be plenty of sunshine. Not too much humidity and a light breeze around 10 miles an hour, keeping things comfortable. Mostly sunny into tonight, increasing cloud cover and a passing shower or two before Tuesday morning. Another beautiful day expected tomorrow. Temperatures back in the mid 80s. Intervals of sunshine and cloud cover throughout the day, but humidity is going to start to increase a little as we head for a warmer latter half of the week. Clear stuck. Cl ah, what? Tongue tied. Seriously. <laughs> Clear skies Tuesday night into Wednesday, and then warmer on Wednesdays as temperatures hit the mid 90s for the first time this week. Mostly sunny all day. Cloud cover increases Wednesday evening. Low of 64, scattered showers overnight Wednesday. Still a little too warm for pumpkin spice, Kate, but it's coming. All right. Thanks so much, John. Well, we are going to wrap things up here on your coffee break. No Nutmeg Sports Day. It's on a bit of, little bit of a break, but it will return tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and we will see you tomorrow for your coffee break at 11. Have a great day.